At My Faith Votes, we talk about a lot of different things, things that we want to help Christians engage in a biblical worldview. We talk about religious freedom, the sanctity of life, having care and compassion for those in need. We also talk about strengthening families and marriages. And I'm excited because we're talking to Stephen Kendrick today, one of the Kendrick brothers that are film producers, creating great media around strengthening families. Stephen, thanks for being here. Thank you, I'm honored. And you've got some great projects you have throughout your career, but coming up this fall yes. in September, there's yes. a couple projects. We're, we're very excited. We have two movies coming out this fall. We've never yeah. had that happen before. Uh, September 10th in theaters across the U.S., our first documentary. It's presented as a feature film. It's very cinematic. It's called Show Me the Father. And uh, we have taken some of the best fatherhood stories we've ever heard of, put them together uh, in an emotional roller coaster. There's twists, there's turns, but ultimately we land at helping people um, improve their fatherhood story, I guess you could say. Everybody has a fatherhood story. This isn't just for men. This is That's for right. everybody. Yeah. Kids can watch this, senior adults, anybody. Uh, but we have NFL players. We have Jim Daly, uh, who's the president of Focus on the Family, has sure. an incredible fatherhood story. We talk about my daughter's adoption. There were some miracles that God did in the midst of all that. Um, but in the midst of all that, um, we, we point to the fatherhood of God that mm -hmm. The word perfect is connected to the fatherhood of God in Scripture. Yeah. All of us have broken fathers. Uh, it, but if you ask someone to tell their fatherhood story, they get kind of tender. And a lot of times they get choked up, either because they loved their father so deeply and were so close to him, or they were abandoned or hurt or abused, or he was in the home and was emotionally disconnected. And so the Lord places us in the families that we're in, um, but he says, I want to be the father to the fatherless. And every time Jesus would talk about um, having a relationship with God, he'd use the word father. This is how you need to see him. This is how you need to relate to him. And he, do he doesn't just say pray to God, that general God. He says pray our father. You know, mm -hmm. If you want to understand his goodness, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your perfect heavenly father in heaven give good things to those who ask? So even our prayer life we should view him as being a very loving, benevolent, caring father uh, who wants to bless us and, and have a close relationship with us. So we get into how to relate to God as a perfect father, and uh, we're very excited about it. We're excited about the responses that we've been uh, hearing from the film, and everybody is seeing it differently. It's hitting them differently, uh, but in a good way, in a healing way for right. some, and then in an inspirational way for others. Yeah, so this is going to be in theaters. In theaters, September the, 10th. Okay, so what do you hope people are going to come away with? Yes. Um, you know, you talked about two different uh, perspectives. Yes. The broken father relationship. Yes. So talk about that first. What, what is the reaction, the response that you hope will come out of this? A large percentage of men especially have not heard any kind of loving blessing from their father. Mm. They're, they're, Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, you know, he hears, you are my beloved son, I'm well pleased, yeah. <laughs> in whom I'm well pleased. And so we, we long for that. We long for even little boys are like, daddy, did I do good? Do you know, are you pleased with me? Do you care about me? But a daughter longs for her father to affirm how much he loves her, that he's going to be there for, he's going to take care of her. And, um, but... Dads don't know how to do that very well. And we walk through a biblical blessing in the movie. We talk about, uh, Tony Evans talks about doing a blessing for the men that is in his, in his church, teaching them how to bless their own kids. We actually feature a blessing that's in the film. Uh, our dad blessed us in our weddings. And uh, it was overwhelming. It, it was very that, emotional. I think that's really important because I know even myself, mm. knowing the power of blessing. Yes. Knowing, what does that really mean? Right. I mean? The Bible is full of it. Right. Speak to that a little bit more. What can we learn from the movie sure. about blessings? Well, uh, blessings and curses are mentioned repeatedly in Scripture. Yeah. If you think of a curse as I am tripping you and pushing you off a cliff by how I treat you, I'm devaluing you, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cursing you. We, we used to talk about cursing that's in movies, you know. Yeah. 
And uh, but to to basically wish evil upon somebody and harm and destruction. The opposite of that is a blessing where love in your heart uh, wants God's best for every area of their life. Yeah. And it, it turns into Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts in the, that I have towards you to prosper you, that, not to harm you in any way, that you would have a hope and a future. Uh, Third John, um, he writes, I pray above all things, beloved. So he's calling them, you. I deeply love you with unconditional godly love. <laughs> he says, beloved, I, I pray uh, above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. In every area of your life, I want God's best. So a blessing is actually... Using the authority God has given you and speaking success mm. over somebody's life. It is communicating to them, I care about you, I value you, I want God's best for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord pour out his heart. May he protect you. May He. And so uh, it says in the Old Testament that when a priest or a father is blessing their children, God will bless them. Mm. He steps into that situation. And he's backing that up. Even as a man is communicating the gospel, which is the power of God into salvation, they don't, they're not the power, but God will bless the communication of the gospel and use it to help transform people's lives. So the, the, the words that we use are yes. powerful. Absolutely. We, we know that with our yes. kids. But there's a spiritual impact yes. with those words. In well, the, in the Jewish community, uh, they learned, you know, God blesses all of creation at the very beginning. Before they did anything, they haven't earned it yet. And he says, be fruit, you know, he creates Adam and he be fruitful and multiply. He blesses them. He, everything on the front end, he blesses them. Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, he hadn't healed anybody. He hadn't called any disciples. He hadn't walked on water. He hadn't done anything. And the Father blesses him right at the beginning. And he communicates, love, you are my beloved son. Mm. Here's identity, speaking identity to his son. In whom I'm well pleased. I delight in you. I like you. Yeah. <laughs> and for a father to look at his children, uh, or anybody for that matter, and, and to look at them and their facial expressions, their tone of voice, everything about them is communicating, you are priceless to me. Yeah. And, and I, I like you, I love you, I want God's best for you. This is my hope, this is my prayer. So God blesses Abraham, I will make you a blessing. I will make you a father of many nations. Abraham blesses Isaac, if you remember, there's the whole yeah. situation where Isaac is blessing Jacob. He's going to bless Esau. Mm -hmm. Jacob steals the blessing because it's so important. And then all these wonderful things, you know, come out of that in Jacob's life. Jacob blesses his 12 sons and is affirming them. Yeah. You see this passed down. You fast forward to New Testament. It says that when we give our lives to Jesus in Ephesians chapter 1, that God becomes our father. He adopts us mm -hmm. into his family. Along with that, Ephesians 1, 3, comes his blessings. Mm -hmm. He's a very loving father. And, uh, and that it says that he will bless us with every spiritual blessing in heaven, in Christ. And so that's the heart of our God. And an earthly father is representing God, is supposed to be yeah. representing God to their children. Now, they don't know that. A lot of men, they just look at their own earthly fathers as the model and the example and it could be a lot of hurt and dysfunction and distance in that situation. They don't realize that all the roles a father is playing on earth are actually roles that God plays in our lives. And in Ephesians 3, Paul says, fatherhood on earth actually came from the fatherhood of God. Mm -hmm. So if I realize, oh, there is an eternal purpose. It's like, in a, it's like in Ephesians 5 when he says marriage is actually about a picture of Christ and his bride, the church. You know? But he says fatherhood is a picture of the perfect fatherhood of God. Mm -hmm. And a father represents the fatherhood of God. He introduces his children, hopefully, to God as father. Right. And, uh, but for the fatherless, for people who don't have good relationships with their dads, that's actually the number one common denominator of people that are in prisons, on drugs, that are being trafficked, um, that are dropping out of school, uh, uh, teen pregnant, uh, teen, teen pregnancy, fatherlessness is the number one common denominator in all of those things. Mm. Because basically, if you checkmate the king in the home or you tackle the quarterback yeah. or uh, you throw the bus driver out of the bus, the family can end up in a ditch. Not always. Yeah. Thank God for moms to step Absolutely. in in that situation. When dad's not engaged, she grabs the steering wheel and saves the family as best as she can. But 
Uh, she's not a dad, and God has to step into those situations. And I think in t- society today, we're hearing the lie that fathers aren't that important, or uh, that they're, they're just not, um, that, that you can survive and thrive as easily and uh, without a father. But the statistics would say absolutely not true. Right. You go to the prisons, you look at the gangs, overwhelming gang population, all the stuff dealing with gangs, fatherlessness is the number one common denominator. The like 70 to 80% juvenile detention centers, fatherlessness is the issue. Trafficking, is that a problem around the world? Is trafficking a problem? Absolutely, fatherlessness, not only with the people that are trafficking other people, but the people being trafficked. The people that are involved in the porn industry, the majority of them fatherless. So in the Old Testament, you'll see God say, do not mistreat the fatherless. You reach out to them, you take care of them, don't prey upon them. Uh, I have a heart for them, I care about them. Uh, In James chapter one, what's pure religion for the church? to visit and take care of the fatherless and widows in their affliction. It says they're suffering, they're hurting. How many young men are growing up without the voice of their father in their home? Well, in America, 24 million uh, children are growing up without the voice of their father in the home. So they're making really hard decisions. Mom's doing her best to tell you, I love you, I'm proud of you. They're longing for identity. Do we have identity issues in this generation? (laughs) Sexual identity issues, gender identity issues, spiritual identity issues, every identity. Dads are supposed to be affirming and clarifying identity in their kids' lives. And so you remove that bus driver out of the bus and it's it's a crisis. And even in the political realm, you'll hear people on both sides of the table. Barack Obama was standing up saying fatherlessness is an issue. Fatherhood is important, you know, and I thank God for that, you know, that any kind of political leader that stands up and says, I'm going to do something about this. For, it's not a political issue. Right. You know, this is about a crisis that's happening in the home, and uh, we have to do things and make laws that strengthen families, and we need to strengthen fatherhood. Easy divorce yeah. separates. In America, when, when a couple goes through a divorce, the majority of the time, the kids end up with, with mom. Yeah. But divorce separates, generally, it separates kids from their dads. Yeah. Not always, uh, but a, a large percentage, percentage of the time. Unwed pregnancy is the other number one reason why dads are not connected to their kids. They don't feel responsible for them. Right. You know, the, the mom will take care of them in this situation. And so, um, show me the father steps in and we are communicating not only the gospel, uh, about how uh, God can heal any broken heart in any relationship, uh, but that God wants to be a perfect father for you because you need him to be that way. Yeah. And um, so the stories, twists and turns, we would recommend this for anybody. There's, yeah. it's, it's appropriate for children. It's yeah. not, it's PG, you know, it's, uh, but f- if you like football, <clears throat> there's some NFL stories that are in there mm. uh, that our cast is, or cast, I, I use the word cast, the, um, People in the movie, half of them are black, half of them are white, and uh, I, and it's a rewatcher. I don't know how many times I've seen it, and I'm like, I can sit down and watch it again right now because it's a, it's an emotional story. You talk about uh, in the New Testament how God the Father adopts us. He speaks yes. into that. I'm assuming you might have mm-hmm. a story. You talk about all these short stories that That's might right. be. Uh, adoption is important in my family. Both my <laughs> kids were adopted. Right. I know the power of that. Um, so is that an area you speak yes. to as well? My, my daughter's adoption story uh, was unexpected. We had four biological children, and the Lord directs us to adopt, and that whole journey ended up being you know, miracles that were taking place and we were just surprised. But we learned a lot about the heart of God in the process uh, because um, I wasn't adopted, you know, but I have been spiritually, you know, um, and Ephesians 1 says, when you believe the gospel, God adopts you. And and it comes with this big package deal. (laughs) It says his forgiveness, you know, his blessing, his love, his Holy Spirit, there's inheritance in heaven, there's all these good things that come to people when we believe in Jesus. And the Apostle Paul in chapter one of Ephesians and in chapter three, he's praying for people that have a relationship with God, but they don't understand it, they don't know what it means, they don't know who they are, and they don't know how much God loves them. And he's praying, he's not really asking them to do anything at the beginning of Ephesians. He's just praying, God, would you open their eyes to how much you love them? Would you show them who they are, what they have? 
the inheritance. You know, when we brought our daughter home from China, she was freaking out. She was crying on the airplane. She was, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, terrified sometimes. She didn't know who she was. She didn't know what had just happened to her. Uh, that she's in a loving, safe home now. That she has a, not a communist future. She lives in America. Uh, she's going to be in a Christian home. She has uh, siblings that care for her. She has the equal love and inheritance and rights and everything else as all my other kids. She has now uh, a welcome mat in my lap every day, you know, and she has access to my heart and my ear. All of that came with her adoption. But because she didn't know it, she was freaking out. And I think a lot of people, they don't realize how much God loves them yeah. and how good. And it's not because... He doesn't love us because we're lovable. He loves us because he's so loving. Yeah. It's flowing out of his heart. That's what scripture says, is that he is love. You know, And so we keep thinking, oh, I have to perform and earn and deserve his love before I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. And that's a wrong backward mentality. Yeah. Um, so we, we talk about the love of God yeah. you know, in this documentary as well. I'm so excited about people seeing it. Well, it, it sounds like it's a great film for fathers, not yes. just the people we've all experienced right. something with our own fathers, yes. but those of us who are fathers, just helping us think better about how we play that role, what we can do to sure. reflect the love of God with yes. our own kids. How involved are we? How well are we speaking into yes. uh, the gifts and the strengths and the the joy that we have with our kids. Um, It'll start, though, with you realizing how much God loves you. Yeah. And when, when you let him, when you become a little bit more vulnerable to that and you yeah. allow God to love you a little bit more, there, it brings healing in your own life. <sighs> and now you're tapped into the source where then you can turn and start loving your kids more deeply. Powerful. You know, I, I've told people... If I were to tell you, hey, go buy the world a you know a new car, you know, go or you know go go buy all your friends a new house, you'd be like, what? I, I can't do that. I, mean, I can't afford that, you know. And you're just exhausted, you know, down. But if if I hand you the blank check of a billionaire, and I, I tap you into that, and you have knowledge of that, and that you can tap into that, now it's no big deal for you to go, you know, for you to go do that. Well, Ephesians one, two, and three basically taps you into God's love his strength, his blessing, mm. um, the, how much he cares about you, his hope and desire for you. And when you tap into that, it not only brings healing to you, but it then enables you to turn around and say, I want to go love on my wife and my kids yeah. more deeply than I ever had before. Yeah, and my absolutely. friends and other people, you know, yeah. Jesus is receiving that love from the Father and he turns around and he starts pouring it out on the world. Makes you know. all the sense in yes. the world. Um, you have another project. Yes. Courageous. Yes. Ten years, ten years since Courageous came out in theaters. It was it was 2011 that it came out uh, across the U.S. and then ended up going internationally. We have so many great stories of what God has done over the last ten years yeah. uh, in other countries. A thousand police officers coming to Christ in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, uh, Alex was contacted by a man who was on the International Space Station. And he said, we just watched Courageous on the International Space oh, Station. It, he was in the air. And he, Alex, he said, I got seven minutes to talk to you. And Alex is like, what? <laughs> you know, he has his family in the kitchen and stuff. Uh, he said, this movie deeply impacted us. Mm. You know? And so uh, Courageous is just real special because it not only connects to the, the fathering journey, but it gives men real practical next steps. And so Show Me the Father, September 10th, six weeks later, Courageous Legacy. We have recolored, re-edited oh. the movie, shot a new ending to the film. It looks amazing. We've enhanced the music. Uh, so on a filmmaking side, it's in 4K now. It's in yeah. you know 5.1 Dolby. It's in, and uh, but on a storytelling side, you get to see these men progress and age 10 years because they really did age 10 years. <laughs> it wasn't makeup or special <laughs> effects, and. Um, but we're excited about people getting to see that again. We've got a new generation of young men that have become fathers over the last 10 years that are going to view this movie totally differently. So, so we've got to go see it. Um, yes, it'll be in theaters. For churches, men's groups. Yes. Get out and go see this. Bring other men to this film. Absolutely. So many men's groups have shut down because of COVID. And uh, they need to relaunch. And this fall, you got Show Me the Father September 10th. Courageous Legacy, October 15th. you got a six-week block of time in the middle there. Great opportunity yeah. to relaunch men into men's ministry, 
uh, to bring some healing to a lot of their hearts, to engage them, and uh, to, to watch God use them again in, in a deeper way. Yeah. You know, yeah. We never want to get stuck or plateaued in anything that we're doing. We always need to be moving forward. Well, these, Stephen, are great. I'm just excited. These are great opportunities for people to dig more into how they just love their families, how, yes. uh, or you know how they understand who God is and yes. how He loves them. Yes. And you do this in such a creative way. You and your brother uh, are just bringing amazing content. Uh, I know my daughter, she loves your films. There's another one that we're not talking about now, but right. uh, uh, um, Overcomer, um, she's a huge fan of that. But you are just, you're bringing godly principles in a creative, but really engaging and fun and funny and um, enjoyable way. So thank you for all that you're doing thank uh, you. to strengthen families and marriages across America and across the world. Mm. We really Thank love you. partnering with you and just the message that you're bringing. So um, we pray blessing on you and and, Thank you. and encourage everyone to go see these films. We've got Show Me the Father coming out and Courageous. Encourage your friends and family to go see them as well. Thanks for being here. Thank so. you.